In this video, I'm going to talk a little bit about getting started with the Maze Generator application. Now, in another video, I've covered uh, which algorithm to choose. And in another video as well, I've covered the mask grid mazes. So in this one, I want to cover the other mazes and just some general um, getting started and tips for you. So once you've chosen your algorithm, you then have the option to choose your type of maze. So a polar grid maze is a circular maze. A hex grid is a normal uh, square or rectangular maze made out of hexagons. A triangle is exactly the same, but made out of triangles. And a rectangular grid is obviously the traditional grid made out of squares. So depending on uh, which option you choose here. So for the polar grid, we only have a size option, but for our hex, triangle and rectangle, we can choose the rows and the columns. Now, the more um, the more rows, the bigger the size of the maze, the more complicated it's going to be. So if you're creating easier mazes, you'll want to have this on the lower number. And obviously, more complicated mazes, a higher number. Now, you'll notice here, and I do cover this in uh, the algorithm video, but you have an option to delete dead ends. If you want a unique solution, keep this on zero. Now, there are some instances where you may not want a unique solution, particularly if you're having different obstacles um, where different ones you go through cost different points and you have to get to the end of the maze losing the most amount of points or anything like that. But we'll go into that in a completely different video. So just know that for most uh, purposes, zero is perfect. So once we've chosen our type of maze and how many rows and columns we, we want, we're gonna go down here and we're gonna take a look at our entry and exit cell. Now you can select from um, preset ones here, from all around the maze, including a random and center of the maze. But what you can also do is click manual input here, and this will enable this button here, select cells. And what this will allow you to do is choose your entry and exit point anywhere you want in the maze like so, and then click OK like that. Now, when you're generating the mazes, each maze will follow that. So if you've got a manual input at the top, left and the bottom right, every maze you generate with these settings will keep that configuration. So once we've got our entry and exit point, I want to go across to show you our solution. Now you have uh, five different options here. Uh, none, if you do not want to have a solution. A line, which is a solid line. Uh, a dot, which is a line, but in little dots. A fill, which is a solid color throughout the path. And a fill distance color. What that is, is that so at the start, it will start at the lightest shade of color. And then as it progresses through the maze, the color will get darker until the exit point, which will be a solid uh, dark color. So once you've chosen our, um, how we want to display our solution, we can then choose the color here. So distance here, this is um, the color for the path. Now, if you are creating for KDP, you probably want to use a gray or, or other shade like that rather than red, because of course, uh, it'd be more expensive to print. Click OK. Uh, we can choose a background color. Obviously, if you want a transparent background, just go across here and tick here. And then our stroke. And what our stroke is, is our walls. So you can choose the color of that as well. Now, once we've chosen um, those settings, what I want to do now is I want to show you the option to have an arrow at the start and the exit of the maze. Now, if you do want that arrow, tick that little box here, draw arrow, and then click the three little dots to the side here. And now we have lots of options where we can customize our arrow size, shape, width, length, etc. Now what I recommend you do 
is for your first example is leave it on the default settings here click save and then down here where it says count choose one which can generate one maze quickly and then this way you can check the placement of the arrows now see in this example they've actually come off the page a little bit off the image so what we're going to do we're going to go back in and then we're just going to move it so offset back this way click save and if we generate again and check and that's too far in so let's let's move it a bit that way and let's make it a bit smaller let's save there we go i'm happy with that see it's worth noting that the arrows is not an exact science because there are so many different possible shapes and sizes of arrows and mazes it's quite difficult to get it always in the perfect spot so what I'd always recommend you do is you generate a maze, just one maze initially, and play around to get the arrow exactly where you want it, and then you'll be fine generating uh, lots of mazes in batches with those settings. So once we've done that, we're gonna go back in, and then the next options I want to show you is the cell size and the pen width. Now, if you view a maze as a table, uh, the cell size is the height and the width of a cell inside that uh, table. So the higher the number, the larger the resolution of the maze will be. Now for most instances, 100 is perfect. And then for the pen width, 10% of that. So 10 in this instance is absolutely fine. The pen width is how thick you want the maze walls to be. So as you saw there, that's on 10. But if I increase that, and I'm sorry, the pen width is also the solution width as well. But if I increase that here, as you can see, we've got a lot thicker walls and pathway in there. Now, as you might have noticed in the few examples I've done so far, I have a print a legend copyright on. Now, you can take that off if you don't want a copyright message, or you can click in here and type in your own uh, copyright message that you want. Now the final couple of options I want to show you is our font option here. So what you, you would do, and that's the font for our copyright notice, is you would type in exactly the font name you have installed in your computer, and then it will change the font when it generates the maze. Our legend row size is the size of our copyright message underneath. Again, typically I would match this to the cell size, as you can see, it's a nice little message below, but you might want to make this bigger or smaller. You can also align this center left or right, depending on your needs. And then the final um, couple of options I quickly want to cover are we can prefix our mazes and our, and our solutions. So at the moment with maze, we'll get maze 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, so on, and solution, solution 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and so on. You can change this if you want, and you can offset the index at as well. So here, as you can see at the moment, we start on zero, but you can change to start on one or start on 50, completely up to you. And then I want next option I quickly want to show you is our output folder for our mazes and our output folder for our solutions. Typically, this will be in the same folder that you've extracted the maze generated to you'll have the puzzles go into a puzzle folder and the maze, and the, um, maze solutions in a solution folder. Now you, call, you can of course change these, completely up to you. And then finally, we just have our options here for our config. Now you can export as a raster graphics, which are PNG, BMP or JPEG or you can export as vector, which are SVG and PDF. Now, if you are exporting as a vector, 
then you do not need to worry so much about the cell size because obviously vector graphics you can scale to as big as you want and you do not lose any sort of resolution or quality so that's absolutely fine and then a final option is our count down here so this decides how many mazes we're going to generate so if it's one then we have one maze 10 10 mazes 100 100 mazes and as many as or as little as you want type it in click generate then as you can see we have our mazes our 10 mazes here so I hope this quick video into the maze generator helps you there are some options uh, that I haven't covered in this video and that is specifically the weight and obstacles that's because it's a little bit more complicated and I'm going to use another video to explain to you the best practice and the best way that you can make mazes with obstacles thank you for watching